If you have been following along with this video series, hopefully you have a woofy passive model that looks something like the one shown here, where we have the shell of our building with our envelope and our windows pretty well defined and flowing through from our Rhino model into woofy passive. At this point, what I'd like to do is turn our attention towards the interior of the building. If you're modeling along in Woofy Passive, you or if you're familiar with Woofy Passive, you know that down in the panel on the lower right hand side, Woofy Passive will sort of say what it thinks your logical next step is in order to complete your model. And you can see here in our model, it's saying that it does not currently have a valid floor area. It doesn't have interior condition floor area defined as part of the model. So one of the things that we would like to do in order to take our model to the next level is to add in that floor area data. Now the other place that we would like to define some information related to the interior of the building is if I come up here to ventilation rooms and in ventilation rooms, um, if you're familiar with Wolfie passive modeling, you'll know that there's a whole section here where Wolfie would like us to enter in detailed room level information data around the utilization pattern and specifically the fresh air ventilation for the rooms. We need to make sure that we or we need to build out these rooms before we're able to model any mechanical systems. So once we've defined these interior volumes, these interior rooms, we can then begin serving those rooms with mechanical systems. But we can't turn our attention to mechanical systems until we've defined the actual uh, room geometry. Now one thing that's going to be a little confusing here is that Woofy, of course, uses the terminology room. You can see the room ventilation up at the top there. We are going to talk about rooms. But it's important not to confuse Woofy rooms with honeybee rooms. It's kind of just a vocabulary, a terminology issue. Uh, honeybee, of course, uses that term room to refer to really what we would more commonly call a zone. There's reasons that they chose to do it that way, but it does make things a little bit confusing because the word room doesn't really mean the same thing in Woofy Passive that it means in Honeybee. So in Honeybee, we have our Honeybee rooms, and inside of the Honeybee rooms, we're going to have a bunch of Woofy rooms. So to make things a little bit clearer, what we're going to use instead of the term room when it comes to Honeybee is the term space. So we're going to define a bunch of interior spaces, and in the Honeybee pH structure, a honeybee room, honeybee zone, can have one or more interior spaces. And the spaces in honeybee are going to correspond to these woofy rooms. All right, so let's see how that's going to work. Let's figure out how we're going to define our interior floor area and our interior spaces. So I'm back in my Rhino model here. So this is the same Rhino model that we have been working in. You can see we've got our uh, envelope and our windows all defined here. So let's now, as I said, start talking about how we're going to define these interior spaces. Um, let's take a look at our grasshopper file first. So let me open up my grasshopper file a little bit. This is the same grasshopper file that we have uh, been working in all along. We are defining our geometry over here on the left hand side. We're uh, f uh, configuring our building segment in the center and then we are exporting everything out to our woofy passive XML file. And you know what to clean this up a little bit let's add some headings here just to kind of keep things tidy. So I'm going to use a grasshopper scribble command. I'm going to say this is export to woofy XML and let's make it nice and big like it's 75 so that later on as our as our uh, file gets a little bit bigger, uh, we will have some clear headings to these things. And let me do this. I'll move these down, and then I will make another. Whoops! I will make another. Just make a copy, copy paste, and over here we'll call this. Um, we'll call this uh, geometry. Um, yeah, we'll just call it geometry. So we got our geometry here. We've got our export to Woofy on that side, and we could even go one step further. Just tidying up here. Let's just do this while we're while we're doing it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the pencil. I'm going to draw kind of a messy line. Say so that's fine. I'm going to select the messy line. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say send to Rhino. What did I just do? Well, we just moved this. We just sent that geometry off to Rhino. And now what I'm going to do in Rhino is make myself a nice straight line. So I've got a nice straight line. Now I'll come back over here and I will right click again and say load from Rhino and then select the nice straight line 
and where'd it go? Did I mess it up? There it is. It just moved it, moved it over here. So now we've got a nice, come on, oh my god, grasshopper. There we go. Now we've got a nice straight line, and we can kind of build in some divisions. And let's do this. If I double click on this, we can kind of give it a, give it some styling as well, just to sort of keep our, our grasshopper um, definition sort of structured, we can make some divisions there. I'll go back to Rhino. I will just go ahead and delete that temporary geometry out. We were just using that to kind of give us a, a rough sort of size um, uh, for these elements there. Okay, so our, our grasshopper definition is looking a little cleaner. That's always nice. It's always good to keep these things organized as we're, as we're going. We could, you know, Puts around, move this over here, uh, etc. Okay, in any event, how are we going to add in our spaces? That's really what we're supposed to be talking about. Well, let me make some room. So I will move this over here and I'll actually make another division. So we'll just kind of set ourselves up here and we'll make another section and we will call this uh, spaces. Now, how are we going to add spaces to our model? Uh, if we come to our Honeybee PH, so we come up here to our Honeybee eight, pH ribbon, you'll see that there is a whole section here dedicated to spaces. And we have some components that allow us to create new spaces. And then we have another component that allows us to add those new spaces to our honeybee rooms or honeybee zones. So we've got to create and then add. So let's take a look at those. We have a create. We've got some other ones here, but we don't need to worry about those just yet. So we've got a create space. So this is a new component that's going to allow us to take in some floor geometry. So we're going to draw the floor boundary of our space and we can input that. And we can then input a whole bunch of other information about those spaces. So we can create new interior spaces based on floor geometry using this component here. We can then use our add spaces component to take those spaces and add them. So notice we have an input for spaces and then we can add them to a set of honeybee rooms. All right, so we've got spaces that are getting added. So why don't we set that up? I'll take my honeybee rooms. So flowing through here, I've got my honeybee rooms, right? Room, we should give those names, shouldn't we? We should give them some names at some point. So in any event, we've got our rooms flowing through and then I'll do the same thing. I'll say rooms flowing through there. Okay, so now this is set up. And so now what we need to do is build the spaces and then the spaces will flow into spaces, right? So we'll configure that and hook that up once the, once the time is ready. All right, so where, where is this floor geometry going to come from? Well, we could auto-generate it if we were in SD level, but you know, for a building like this, what I think we should do is we should actually define or draw the interior spaces in a more detailed fashion inside of our Rhino model. So I'm going to use a pipeline. So I'm, again, I'm going to use a pipeline and I'm going to bring in the geometry for those, uh, for those floor segments. Uh, and let's give it our consistent styling, of course, that we use when we are bringing in uh, data from outside of Grasshopper. So we'll do that. And all right, so we're bringing some data in and I want to get surface data. So we'll bring in surface data. Whoops, don't want to do that. And we need to filter it. So what layer are we going to bring our surface, our space data in from? Well, we don't have any spaces in our model just yet. So let's go ahead and come over to Rhino and make a new layer. Let's call it O3 spaces. So this will be the layer that we're going to draw all of our interior spaces on so I can filter for O3 spaces. And again, I do think the capitalization matters. So I did all caps here, all caps there. And now we can bring in our surfaces. So now we can filter or filtering by just the layer three spaces uh, and bring in all the surfaces on that layer. But we don't have any surfaces on that layer yet. So let's go ahead and draw some uh, right click and lock this for a second. And then I'm going to minimize it because now we need to come back to Rhino, do some work in Rhino. Let me turn off my windows, turn off my geometry, and let me grab this upper story and type hide to hide it. And let's just look at our first floor. So we've got our first floor here and we need to define the interior spaces of this building. Well, before we start drawing, we need to just very briefly discuss what counts as an interior space, what counts as interior floor area for a FIAS project. Let me bring up the FIAS 2021 uh, Passive Building Guidebook here. And let's just search for ICFA. ICFA, ICFA, the term interior condition floor area. This is how FIAS defines interior floor area. And let's see, we wanna just come down. Here we go, uh, page 50. Section 4414, interior condition floor area. 
So as for Fias rules, um, they say that interior condition floor area is the interior dimension, drywall to drywall, a projected floor area of the conditioned spaces with at least seven feet in height. It includes all the area under the stairs, cabinets, interior walls, mechanical spaces, storage, but it does exclude open to below areas. So we'll see how that impacts us in a little bit. Uh, more specifically, um, spaces open to below shall not be counted. Other than open to below, so this is kind of just reiterating what it said up above, um, project floor area of the stair treads counts towards ICFA on all floors, that is once per floor. By the seven foot rule, some area under the stairs would normally be excluded, but they say to include it. So I think I think the it in that statement refers to the area under the stairs that would normally be excluded. So okay, so we're gonna we're gonna include all the area under the stairs on the first floor there, as per the rules. So okay, so we need to draw our interior space based on drywall to drywall, um, finish to finish dimensions. So if I come back, I'll take this off to the side. If I come back to my Rhino model here, what that means is it wa they want us to draw f um, interior floor areas from our finish all the way over to our finish. So we're not going to include the thickness of this exterior wall. So if I wanted to draw the floor of this building, I could come over here to my rectangle tool and I could start from the interior finish and I could go to interior finish. And maybe we should give our floors some of them sort of a color so that they're more obvious. How about like an orange color or something like that? So here's our interior floor area, right? Interior finish to interior finish. And we're going to capture all the area under the stairs. Now, one thing I don't like about this is, you know, we could do it this way. We could build one big room and that would flow through and, and we could accurately capture the floor area and the volume that way. Um, and if, let me go back to Woofy Passive for a second, come over to Woofy. And what would happen is here in the rooms ventilation worksheet, we would get one item listed and it would say, you know, first floor or whatever name we gave to it. And it would have the entire volume and all the flow air flow rate for, for that, uh, all the fresh air volume flow rate for that space. That's fine. Mathematically that works. Um, but for our purposes, let's actually, let's actually do this in a slightly different way. Let's actually break this up into individual room areas. So I'm going to delete this and rather than drawing one big area, I'm going to in fact draw uh, several smaller rooms, um, so that we can see how that works as well. So let me do this. I am going to lock my CAD. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to lock my CAD layer so that I don't accidentally mess up my CAD layer so I can't select it or, or move it around. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to type SR for surface and I'm going to start drawing out the various surfaces of my building. And I can draw them in uh, lots of different ways. I could draw sort of two segments like this. I select them and then what I can say is I can say join and I can say merge all coplanar faces and notice here we've now merged together sort of one surface that way. There's lots of different ways that we can draw surfaces in Rhino. This is just one way. Now should we be drawing, now what should we do with the closet here? Well we could say all right here's our closet but uh, what about this sort of thickness here? If we remember, let me pull back our woofy rules. Um, it says here to include, include the interior, the thickness of interior walls. So, okay, so this area actually needs to be part of one or the other of these rooms. So we could sort of decide however we want to do it. I could, uh, you know, take my closet and I could move so that it goes like this. And I'm using sub object selection and the move tool to just move that way. We could alternatively split this at the center line. That would also be just fine. So I could come in here and I could sort of move this so that it's on the center line. I'm just using, I'm holding down control and shift and then dragging a selection box and I can move those points there so I can move it to the center line. Whatever you prefer to do, it doesn't really matter. Um, that level of detail is not really going to affect anything here, but for our purposes, let's go ahead and move all of this to the center line of these walls. So I'll move that to the center line there. So we've got a closet. We've got an entry. Uh, let's go ahead and draw our mechanical room. So we'll draw our mechanical room here. There's our mechanical space. Um, we can draw our kitchen. So let's draw our kitchen. So I'm going to go from here and I guess we should come to what well, we'll go there and then we will 
zoom in there and we'll, we'll uh, bring this over all the way to there so I need to join these together so I'm going to type join and I'm going to type merge all coplanar faces and that's going to merge them together into one L-shaped piece and we can move this guy into the right position so let's do this and there we go we'll move that over and then we will move this up okay and now we can draw our closet now again we don't have to split it up like this uh, you know from a from a modeling perspective we could sort of define our geometry however we prefer but for for sort of teaching purposes here i'm going to um to find the geometry in a lot of in a quite a bit of detail so i'm going to define each sort of room separately i guess this is our refrigerator so we should add in this refrigerator space we'll sort of go there now this should get merged together with the kitchen so i'll type join i'll select both of them type join type merge all coplay interfaces so now we have one uh, sort of very odd shaped kitchen volume here and let's uh, define our den and Go to the center and then lastly we can define our living room so I'm going to do that in two pieces I'll do first piece there and again I'm just typing SR for surface whoops so you can see I overshot it a little bit there so I'm just going to delete that and do that again come out here come there and snap and then I want to merge these together so I'm going to select both of them type join and then merge coplanar faces all right so we've got all of our rooms now of course there's lots of different ways we could have done that we could have done one big one and then split it using cut lines you know there's any number of ways we could have done these kind of things and that's fine now one additional thing I'm going to do here just to kind of um, get some data flowing through is I'm actually going to name these spaces so notice here this is the den so how does that name flow through well there's a bunch of ways we could do it but let's just do this let's come over to our attributes we'll go to name and we'll just call this one 106 den whoops not deb den so I'm just naming it in the object name field here press enter and you'll see how we can pull that information in later so I'll go to my bathroom now and type uh, 107 bathroom we'll go to the closet and type 108 closet go to the kitchen type 104 kitchen go to our living room type 105 living And then our last couple over here, I'm just selecting the surface and then going to the attributes and entering the name. So that's all I'm doing right now. That's just another closet. And then the last one here, 103 mechanical. So those names are going to stay. So notice if I select these again, the name stays. So the name is going to travel with the geometry at this point. So the name travels with the geometry and we'll see how we can pull that in to our grasshopper scene in just a little bit. Okay, so we've got all of our surfaces for our first floor drawn at this point. Can we push those through into our Woofy file yet? Let's take a look. So let me bring back my grasshopper scene. And at this point, all of those spaces are going to come through automatically here. Let me give ourselves a little more. We'll do that. Make a little more room. Um, all of those spaces are going to come through automatically because we're using a pipeline. So let me right click and unlock the solver. And you'll see that all those spaces are flowing through here. And let's see what we get out the other end. We get we get one space with lots of volumes. So what's what's happening here exactly? Well, what this component is doing is it's saying, okay, you have given me what have I given it? I've given it seven individual surfaces. But as far as this component is concerned, all of those surfaces are the same name. And the same number and so what this component is going to try and do is it's going to say all right well you gave me a bunch of surfaces but they all have the same name same number i'm just going to join them all together into a single quote unquote space which will then flow through into our woofy model so okay let's take a look at what would happen if we did that i'm going to take spaces i'm going to connect spaces to spaces so now we've created the spaces and the spaces are now getting added to the honeybee room so let's just see what happens when that goes to to woofy let's just take a look at what that looks like in woofy so i'm gonna zoom out come over here to export to woofy and i'll just run this once quickly so this has now written out that file to my desktop so i'll come back to woofy and i'll just go open as always i will navigate to my desktop i'll filter for xml files and i'll just grab the one with the latest timestamp here and say open and let's see what let's see what we got let's see what see what this looks like 
go to passive house verification and now let's come down to ventilation rooms and you can see here in rooms ventilation that we have one zone unnamed unnumbered with all 750 square feet of floor area so the entire thing has been merged together it's been given some pattern called generic office it's been assigned some ventilation flow rates we'll talk about what all that is don't worry about that but that's just default we can of course change all that but for now everything's been merged together into one big room well, what if i don't want that what if i wanted to list out the kitchen and the entry and the living room and all the different spaces that i just defined well, let's go back to Grasshopper for a second. Remember what happened here was the Grasshopper, this tool said, okay, you gave me seven spaces, but as far as I'm concerned, they all have the same name. Notice here, we're not giving any names to anything. And so it just merged them all together. Well, how can we break this up? How can we break this apart into individual pieces? Well, the what we wanna do is supply the names. So we can use a standard honeybee component for that so I can just search for object details so the object details component is the best way to bring in the names of all the surfaces if I was to now take a look at this n output notice I getting all my names and all these names are gonna line up to these surfaces so surface 0 is the living room surface 1 is the den surface 2 is the kitchen and so on so I can take these names and feed them into space names And what happens? Nothing happens. We still get one big space, one big space. So what's going on? Why didn't that work? Well, there's one other, there's one other thing that we need to do in order to make this work. So this component is looking for a tree of information. Now, data trees are kind of a bigger subject. They're a fundamental part of the way the grasshopper organizes information. We're not going to get into a lot of it here, but just suffice to say that what this component is looking for is it's looking for data trees of information. And what it's going to do is try and merge together any information which is on the same branch of the data tree. Now, if we were to come over here to sets, you'll notice that there's a whole universe of um, components. These are stock grasshopper components for working with data trees. D data trees are just lists of lists. They're, they're not, they're, you know, multidimensional uh, lists of lists. They're, they're not more complicated than that, um, but uh, they, they have a kind of peculiar API uh, language way of working with them when it comes to, to Grasshopper. Okay, that none of that matters. The only thing that we need to worry about here is to just say that instead of having all of our spaces on one branch, how do I know these are on one branch? Because they're all on this uh, zero branch that I can see right here. Instead, what I want to do is I want to put each of these surfaces on a separate branch and each of those branches will then become a separate space. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, it's really quite straightforward. All we have to do is come up here to our sets, to our tree, and just grab this guy called graft tree. And I'll feed in the data. And then if we take a look at what's happened to the data, notice that Grasshopper has gone off and it said, okay, well, you gave me seven items, or eight items, whatever it was, seven items. And originally they were all on the same branch, but you use this graft component and the graft component puts each of those items onto a separate branch. So now what we could do is feed this in, let me disconnect this. Now what we could do is we could feed this in to this component. And as soon as I do that, now I'm getting seven individual spaces. So seven individual spaces. So by grafting everything, by grafting all of those inputs, you can see that we're now getting seven unique spaces. We do the same thing with our names. So let me just reorganize this a smidge here. And we'll use the same graft component. So I just copy pasted. And now the names are being grafted. Whoops, not that. I didn't mean to bring that up. I just wanted to bring up a panel. Now the names are being grafted in the same way. So each name goes on to a separate branch. So we can take those names, feed those into space names. And notice now that we have spaces with the right name, which is flowing through. So we've organized all of our data here. Let's turn these off. We've organized all of our input data into data trees, which then flows into this make spaces component. We'll come over here, we'll go back and reprint or rewrite our Woofy XML file. Go back to Woofy Passive, say open, scroll to our desktop, 
find our latest timestamp, say OK. And now, if we go down to our ventilation rooms, what we'll see is that all of our rooms are flowing through. So 101 entry, bathroom, etc. And each one has a flow rate, uh, a, a supply and exhaust flow rate assigned to it. And notice down here that our, uh, our, our areas are coming through. So the individual room areas are all flowing through as well. One thing that I neglected to mention, now that we're building out these interior spaces, is if, if I was to come up here and go to the zone level information, notice, notice now that the zone level um, interior condition floor area is being set, as well as the volume um, uh, of all of those spaces. So all of this information is sort of flowing from our, our individual rooms. Whoops. All right, so there's our spaces. So all of our spaces are, for our first floor at least, are now flowing through. So we've got all of our spaces for our first floor. So we're building up the spaces, and then we add the spaces to the honeybee uh, uh, rooms. So let's take care of our second floor as well. Let's deal with our, our second floor there. And yeah, let me just tidy up here a little bit. We'll deal with our second floor. So let me go ahead and lock this, minimize, and come back to our rhino scene. So back in my rhino scene here, I'm going to type in show to show. Oh, whoops. I need to, first of all, I need to unlock my CAD. So I had to unlock the CAD. And now I can type show, and it will unhide the second floor. So we still need to draw the um, area of our second floor here. OK, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type isolate to isolate just the upper level here. And we need to draw all of the floor areas for our second floor. So I'm still on my O3 spaces. And let's go ahead and draw in all the interior uh, zones of our, our spaces here as well. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and lock my CAD again so that I don't accidentally grab CAD edges when I start moving stuff around like this. I'm going to grab this one and move this over to here. Uh, we will um, draw the bathroom draw it to the sort of just do this and I'm just moving these roughly to the center obviously you could be more exact with this if you really wanted to make sure that these were like you know right to the center it doesn't matter that much um, so, so roughly in the center is good enough uh, for, for our purposes here but you certainly could be as exact as you wanted to now notice one thing I'm doing here I am I'm gonna grab these two type join type merge uh, notice I am framing around the open to below space. Remember, the open to below is not supposed to be captured as a, um, a an ICFA zone, an ICFA space. Um, so we'll, we'll leave that out for now. And let me do this. Grab that one. I'll start building from there. Come across. I, I should merge these together. We'll type join, merge. And then lastly, we have our closet. So I'll just grab this edge. I'm just holding down Control and Shift to select the edge. And there we go. And then I'll do the same thing here. I'll use my Move tool to snap it directly into the right spot. And there we are. So we've now drawn our second floor. I suppose we should do the same thing where we part pull in the names. So let's go through one at a time. We'll just come over here. And we'll start with this one. So 204, bedroom. 205, closet. 203, landing, whoops, I can't remember if I was, not landing, landing, I can't remember if I was using all caps on the first floor or not, uh, it is important to be consistent with this stuff, but you know, uh, bathroom, and lastly, 201, bedroom, so we've got two bedrooms here on the upper story and a landing. All right, so notice that each of these, the names stay with them. Uh, now, because we drew these on our O3 spaces, when we go back to our grasshopper scene and we run this again, those should automatically get harvested because we're using this pipeline. So all of those should flow through. And if we take a look at our spaces again here, we should see that we've got all of our first floor spaces, 101. And notice now all of our 201 um, spaces are flowing through as well. So we get all of our spaces here coming into our model. All of those are getting hosted on the honeybee rooms um, appropriately down there. Alrighty. So that's pretty good. So now if we will come to the, over to the right, we will run our, oops, I guess I had it on. Um, it was on the, so we've already written it. We'll just turn, run it one more time and uh, we'll come to our Woofy Passive, go File, Oop. 
open. Navigate to the desktop and use the lo the last timestamp again. And if we go to our notice here now, we've got all of our we've got all of our rooms. This is uh, just a uh, we just don't have quite enough. Let me see if I can. There we go. So there's our 201, 202, 203. So we've got all of our we've got all of our rooms now flowing through. And notice each one has its uh, floor area, and we've been assigned some ventilation flow rate information by default. Why are these numbers so weird? Um, they're nice round numbers in um, SI in cubic meters per hour. So they're just being converted over. So this is using some defaults. We can absolutely set all of that uh, afterwards. In any event, all of this is now flowing through, and it's now becoming part of our zone. So notice here that our total zone interior condition floor area has now jumped up to 1290. So all of that is sort of automatically flowing through. Now, one thing that is happening here is notice our gross volume, our volumes are flowing through. So the volumes are also getting set by these spaces. So one of the things that the space is doing, uh, let me just do this. I'm going to just type BREP and bring up a preview BREP and we look at the volumes, one of the things that's happening here is the actual interior volumes are also getting set. What about this bit in the middle here? Isn't that supposed to be, so that is a volume that should actually be coming through into our, into our volume, but it's not supposed to be part of the ICFA. So how do we deal with that issue? The fact that we kind of do want this volume, but we don't want the, the surface or the ICFA. Well, that's where we can use these weighting factors. So one of the things we can do here is um, specify individual weighting factors. By default, the weighting factor is one, but we could specify a weighting fa floor area weighting factor of zero for that specific room. So for this, we could draw a room, we could give it a weighting factor of zero, which would cause it to not get included in the ICFA, but its volume then would be included. So let me turn this off. Let me just go ahead and delete that out of the scene there. So what I want to do here is in my spaces, I do want to come in. I want to build another surface. So I'm going to build a surface. So I'm going to make a surface here. And this one is not an actual space. So I'm going to call this open to below. So I'll give it a kind of a funny name there, right? It doesn't, doesn't actually have a sort of space. And notice that that space is coming through. So let's see. So there we go, it's that top one there, open to below. And so we've got all of our, so we've got all of our surfaces and we've got our names. So this top one here, this zero, is my open to below uh, surface. So what I wanna do is specify a weighting factor just for this top surface here. So just for this top surface here. Now there's a bunch of ways that we could do this kind of automatically. Um, one way that we could uh, just really simply do it is just write these out. Um, there's There are lots of other ways that we could do this, um, but for our purposes, let's just do it real quick like this. So I'm just gonna, oops, not 11. I'm just gonna make a list of, oops, I made too many. There we go. So I just made a list of weighting factors. So we'll call these weighting factors. So I've got 13 names, 13 surfaces, and 13 weighting factors. And notice that my first weighting factor is zero, and that'll correspond to my first room, my first space there. So what I can do is take this list, so this is just a list of numbers, and I can feed them in to my weighting factors input. And of course, I will have to graft them, just as I have graphed everything else, so that everything lines up there. And let's see how, what happens when we feed those in. Whoops, not to volume geometry. That's not what I meant to do that weighting factors there we go so I'm feeding in a list of data into weighting factors weighting factors is taking in a list of data here and if we wanted I think we can see it in the spaces I know I guess we don't get a preview of the weighting factor by by default in any event so what's happening here is the weighting factor of zero is getting applied to just the first of the surfaces in our list here which happens to be this surface right here and then that's gonna um, cause the ICFA to effectively be disregarded, but it, then it will include the volume for that space. So that kind of thing is going to happen all the time, um, you know, when you have these kind of different spaces here. So let's just make sure that that worked. I'll come over here to my export. I'll say run the exporter one more time, and then I'll come down to Woofie, say file, open, 
Head them up to my desktop. Grab this one. Say OK. And there we go. There's all of our rooms here. So we've got all of our rooms. And if we go to our where our zone level here, um, we are getting the right volume information now. The net volume, gross volume, uh, ICFA are getting set properly. So now we've got our interior uh, spaces. So here's our interior spaces all being built out. Now, the interior spaces can, of course, be more or less complicated than this. There are other ways to do some of this stuff. There are, come back up over here, there are more tools for spaces here that we haven't really talked about. Obviously, we haven't talked about uh, setting the ventilation flow rates for the spaces just yet. Lots of different ways that we could do that. Um, and of course, we could you know add in more information here about volume heights and space ventilation flow rates and numbers and, and blah, blah, blah. But this would be kind of the, you know, the easiest, um, simplest uh, uh, method for, for building out these spaces. But the tools, of course, give you tons of flexibility to do this in, in any way that you want. The one trick is just to make sure that you're feeding the data into this component in a data tree format so that each of your spaces is on a separate branch of the tree. That's really all you have to do to make sure that everything uh, gets segmented out properly. So we will leave this one here. We've got our, our grasshopper file shaping up. I'll go ahead and save this. And um, uh, when we come back in the next section, we'll turn our attention to the next piece of the puzzle.